I'm Aaron, proprietor at Hare Hill Decor, a small decorating business based in the northwest of the UK. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to maintain your brushes and your rollers properly. Um, the video is split into three parts. I'm going to be talking about how to clean and store brushes and rollers used in water based and oil based paint as well. Um, so, first of all, uh, part one is just going to discuss storing wet brushes and rollers and all this means is that you uh, once you're finished with your brushes and your rollers if you've been using a water-based paint you don't need to clean them after every single time that you're going to use them you can just store the brushes overnight as long as you're going to still use the same color of paint the following day then this method will save you a lot of time and it'll also save you a little bit of paint as well so first of all um, I'm just going to take a bin bag and you can use any type of plastic for this you don't have to necessarily use a bin bag but I find that using a bin bag is, uh, is better I'm just going to cut the bin bag up into, into strips um, so I've got my roller here which I've been using in water based paint it's just standard emulsion I'm going to take one of the strips of plastic that I've cut out I'm just going to lie it down on the floor you want to make sure that it's all nice and flat so you don't get any creases now there's still some paint left in this roller so once you put it on the strip it should stick to the plastic straight away um, and you just want to roll it just round once so that you can grab the roller without getting paint all over your hand and then just pull the roller arm away from the sleeve and you're going to have a little bit of paint on the roller arm um, so you just want to put that to one side, it usually builds up on the edges here um, so just put that to one side for now, you can always give that a rinse out later on so you want to lie the plastic down on the floor and then what you're going to do is you're just going to tightly roll the plastic around the roller sleeve and just keep on spreading the plastic out as you go along to make sure that it's nice and tight because you don't want the air to get to the roller sleeve and then when you get to the part here at the edge where you have the seam um, this, this seam part here you're going to want to fold the plastic at that point to begin with inside the, inside the roller sleeve and then just carry on rolling all the other the edges into the uh, middle of the sleeve and then just turn it around to do it at both ends starting with the, the seam edge and that will make sure that it doesn't unravel so once the uh, both ends have been rolled in nice and tightly, it's nice and airtight in there, that should keep the paint wet and you can store this overnight. I've known them to stay wet for, for days, even weeks, if you uh, if you kept it nice and tight and in a, in a sort of cool and dry area. You can also do this with your paint brushes, I've just been using this one again in the same standard water based emulsion. Um, I'm going to be using it the following day and I don't want to clean it out because I'm going to be using it in the same colour. So again, just take another strip of plastic, um, just lie it out flat, make sure there's no creases. And then you're going to want to pop the brush down just so the edge of the plastic covers the, the ferrule, the metal part of the brush which holds the bristles together. And then just roll that over, the same that we did with the sleeve, you just want to roll it nice and tight and keep on spreading the plastic out. just as you're going along. Now hopefully if I've cut the right size it should just neatly fold over to the edge there. And again when you've got the the edge where you have the seam you just want to fold the plastic back over itself in the opposite way and that'll keep the seam closed and keep the, uh, the plastic nice and tight. And if you've left yourself enough slack you can even take the edge and roll it around the handle of the brush um, you don't have to do that really, as long as you lie it flat somewhere it should just stay all nice and wrapped up tight and as long as the brush is nice and airtight that should stay wet for a few days, even, even a couple of weeks and then when, you, when you're finished you can uh, just store it away and then the following day just pick it back up unroll it and stick it straight back into the, uh, the same colour that you were using so once you've finished with your rollers and your brushes um, and you're not going to be using them for a while, it's a good idea just to clean them out thoroughly. Um, so with water-based paint 
all you're going to be doing is uh, just take your brush. I'm just going to unravel it from the plastic that I had it in earlier. Although you might have just finished using it, so just wipe all the paint off, off the brush back into the tin. And then you want to get some warm running water. You don't want it too hot because it makes the paint go all stringy and, and a bit tacky and it ends up sticking to the bristles um, and you can end up ruining the brush that way but you, you want it to be nice and warm, you don't want it too cold either because you'll, you'll struggle to get all the paint out. And you're just going to run the water over the, the top of the brush, get all the excess off the stock and off the, the outside edge of all the bristles. And just use your thumb to, uh, to push it down. Um, what I like to do to begin with is take a wire brush, um, just a normal wire brush, and then scrub downwards in the direction of the bristles. Um, and that gives the, the stock and the, the bristles a good comb through, and it really gets all the, uh, the dry paint off the end of the brush as well, which you can struggle to do with just water alone. You want to just scrub the brush in one direction. Down the, you don't want to come back over the bristles that way and, and scrub it that way because otherwise you're going to end up bending the bristles all over the place. You just want to give it a nice scrub in the in the same direction that the bristles are going. And just keep adding a little bit of water to the uh, to the wire brush as well, and that'll help get all the the paint off the ferrule, which is the metal bit that holds the bristles together. So once you've got all the excess paint off, you just want to start tapping the brush on the basin of the sink. Um, with the water just running over it. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit there. Um, and you, you're just working the paint away from the bristles basically. Just just tap like this. You don't want to uh, you don't want to tap the brush and spread the bristles out too much. I'll um, I'll just quickly show you actually. I'll just get some uh, some of this excess paint out so I can show you. You don't want to um, you don't want to bend the bristles out so much that they spread out like this because otherwise they might not spring back into place once you've finished cleaning the brush and you can end up ruining the bristles so you just want to tap it out just like this about a 45 degree angle should be fine and just keep tapping it on all four sides of the brush keep spinning the brush around and, and tapping the paint out on a different side um, and as you can see all, all the paint just starts to run run free from the bristles. Every now and again you want to just load the brush up like this, hold the bristles together with your hand just to stop them from spreading out. Um, load the brush with water and give the bristles a squeeze and you'll see all the paint coming out of the stock just below where the bristles are held together. Just there. And you'll also see it coming down on the bottom end of the handle as well. And if the water's still milky like this then you know that you've, you've still got to uh, you still want to keep on rinsing the brush. And the idea is to keep on repeating this process until the water runs completely clear. And you can take a little bit of time washing these brushes out proper. That's why it's a good idea just to store them wet if you're going to be using them again the following day. That's, that's a good way to save a bit of time and a, and a bit of paint. So once the water starts to run clear like this, um, I'm just going to give it a quick test load the brush full of water. Yeah, it's, it's quite clear now. It's still slightly milky, but most of the paint has come away. I'll just show you there closer. So what I like to do now, um, at this point, is take a little bit of uh, liquid detergent. Any, any kind of liquid soap will be fine. Um, you just want to squirt some liquid soap into the top end of the bristles, and then really work the soap through the bristles to uh, to give it a good thorough clean. You can, you can tap it in the bottom of the basin, just like this, like we were doing before. I suppose this is a good way of cleaning the sink after you've finished as well. Um, and you can also just work the, the soap into your hand, and that'll, um, that'll really work it through the bristles, because the, although the water was still pretty clear earlier on, there's still gonna be a little, a little bit of paint in the, in the stock of the brush. And you can also use the soap to clean the, the ferrule and the handle as well if you like. Once you've worked the soap in, just give it a really good rinse. Because for some reason water alone doesn't seem to get all the paint out completely. A little bit of soap will just loosen that, that excess paint in the bottom of the brush. So once the soap's all been, uh, all been rinsed through, you just want to just shake out all the excess water to begin with. 
and then what I like to do is give the brush a really good spin just slide it back and forward between your hands just like this and do that for about 10 to 15 seconds or so until all the all the water comes loose this will help to dry the brush off as well then what I like to do um, is just tap using the bristles um, just tap the bristles onto your hand and that'll that'll give it a really good shake and any any water that's still left in the stock that'll um, that'll get it all loosened up as well it helps you just to spread the bristles out so that when the brush dries all the bristles dry into uh, into a nice shape again and you can just use your thumb to spread the bristles out all back into shape and there we go that's all nice and clean you can uh, you can stand that upright in a little tub um, I wouldn't stand it the other way around because again it could bend the bristles out of shape and it can end up ruining the brush you can pretty much do the same with your roller sleeve um, but what I like to do to begin with with a roller sleeve is give it a really good pre-soak um, because roller sleeves hold quite a lot of paint even when you've um, when you've run the roller sleeve across the wall and you think all the paints you know been taken out of the roller sleeve there's still quite a lot of paint left in there so um, what you want to do is just fill the sink up with warm soapy water and again you can use any type of liquid soap it doesn't really matter um, you just want to take the sleeve out of the bag if you've stored it or if, you, if you've just finished using it you just take it off the arm again and then put the arm to one side and just uh, just pop it in the sink there you don't really need to fill the sink quite so full um, to begin with you just want to just work the water into the into the roller sleeve to begin with and that'll, that'll get all the excess paint out because the water's gone quite milky already and we haven't really done anything yet just make sure that you uh, you work off all the excess paint to begin with and um, give it a really good soak and the roller sleeve is going to float anyway so you want to fill the sink up until the roller just starts to float um, you want to make sure the top half of the roller is covered as well. You've got to keep that moist, otherwise it will just dry out, and the bottom half will stay wet, and that will be your roller sleeve ruined. That's just starting to float now, so this should be fine. So I'm going to leave this for about 15 minutes or so. That should be enough time to uh, to let it soak through. Okay, so that's been soaking for about 15 minutes. As you can see, most of the paint's come out, but it's still quite milky. Still quite a lot of paint left in there. So I'm going to get rid of all this milky water to begin with um, and we're going to do the same as what we did with the brush really, we're just going to start rinsing it through with some warm water. Um, what you want to do to begin with is um, start at the top end um, because inside the roller sleeve you're going to get a lot of build up of paint in there so you want to just run the water on the inside part first and then use your thumb or your finger just to scrape all the, the dry paint off. Just let the row the uh, just let the water run straight through the middle of the sleeve. And you want to do that at both ends as well, because you, you end up getting a lot of it on both ends of the sleeve. Then once you've managed to get rid of all the excess paint from the inside, you want to start at one end of the roller sleeve and let the water just run down for about five or ten seconds or so because that'll help you to, uh, that'll speed up the process that it takes to clean this roller out so just let the water run down from one end to the other to begin with and that'll get rid of most of the excess paint otherwise you'll just end up spreading all the uh, all the thick paint all over the sleeve and it'll just take longer to clean and then once that's been done you just want to start scrubbing the water into the uh, into the roller sleeve just use your hands to uh, to scrub in that pretty much every direction really and we're just going to give this a really thorough rinse there's no real special technique to this you just want to uh, keep on rinsing it through So you can see there's a lot of paint still left in there. 
a good idea to check if you if you want to just keep on checking every every two or three minutes just just fill it full of water and then let it let it all run out into your hand and then that will uh, that will give you a good indication of how much paint is left in the roller just just load it all up full of water and then let the water run into your hand like we did with the brush and if it's still milky then you know that you still got to you still got to keep on rinsing but uh, another thing you can do as well is you can also stand the roller sleeve up into the basin. If you've got a flat basin, you just stand it up in the middle and let the water run into the inside of the roller sleeve and it will just fill up the middle and then roll down the outsides and all the paint will start washing through from the bottom. And you can just leave it stood up in this running water for as long as you need to clean until the water runs clear, but that can use quite a lot of water and to be honest, it doesn't really give it a, a very thorough clean anyway. It's a bit of a lazy way to do things. I tend to just like rinsing the roller this way and giving it a good scrub with your hands. And then every few minutes or so, keep on checking. I mean, this is uh, this is getting quite clear. There's still a little bit milky. So again, what I like to do is is get some liquid detergent and then just run a run run some soap in there. And then work all the soap into the into the roller sleeve, and that should get all the uh, the leftover paint that's still buried deep into the into the fibres. That should get rid of all of it, and it also gives the roller sleeve a bit of a clean because over over a while they can get a bit mucky. I've had this sleeve for a few years now, and um, running loads of soap through all the fibres just sort of uh, just injects a bit of life back into the roller again, and it'll. Uh, it'll just last a lot longer this way and it'll give you a much better finish on the wall as well especially if you're using a you know a fine finish paint so once all the soap has been rinsed away we're just going to uh, load it up and give it a check and that's pretty clear now there's no no paint left in there and you really want to make sure it's completely clear before you uh, before you dry this out so stop the water and then just wring the the sleeve out in your hands and get all the excess water out. You're not going to be able to get all the water out this way, so what I like to do is put it back on the roller arm, go outside somewhere, and then give the give the sleeve a really good spin out. You're going to end up getting water everywhere, but um, it's best probably just to do this outside. And there we go. Once it's been spun dry, that's uh, that's your roller sleeve all nice and clean. I'm going to talk to you now about how to clean and store and maintain brushes that you've used in oil-based paint. Um, you've got to do this a little bit differently to the, uh, the water-based stuff that we've been discussing earlier on in the video, um, mainly because the, the characteristics between oil-based and water-based paint are just, they're just completely different really. They're all made up in different ways. They use different chemicals to make the paint up. So obviously means you need to use a different chemical to clean it as well. Um, so, first of all, um, as far as storing these brushes goes, if you, uh, if you don't want to spend time cleaning the brush out to begin with, then you can, you can store oil-based brushes wet as well. Um, I wouldn't recommend sticking them in, uh, in a piece of airtight plastic, um, again, because of the way the oil-based paint dries. Um, it, it's not really ideal, it's not really a good technique to use because eventually the brush will just end up drying even uh, even if you stick it in an airtight bag. Um, what I've got here, I, I would probably recommend using a chemical brush store to store your brushes. That's, uh, that's this little box here. Um, basically it's an airtight box, it's got, um, it's got a chemical in there that vaporises and keeps the brushes wet. Um, I can just quickly show you here actually. Um, okay, so um, it's got a little a little card there full of uh, a vaporizing solution and there's little hooks to uh, hook the brushes to and it keeps them upright and keeps the bristles off the base of the box to keep the bristles all nice and straight. Um, and all you basically do with this is you, once you're finished with the brush, you wipe off as much of the paint as you possibly can 
and then you just stick it in there, pop the lid back on and then it will keep the brush wet um, until you need to use it again. The problem with these chemical store boxes though is that they can be quite expensive um, especially if you're not going to be using your brushes very often because you do need to keep on replacing the vapour pads to keep the brushes wet. Um, a cheaper alternative would be to fill a, a tin up with water. You can use an old paint tin or a jar, anything that you don't mind getting paint on. Um, if you just pop the brush in to begin with and then fill the water up so that it just covers the top edge of the bristles where the bristles meet the metal ferrule that's another good way to keep your oil brushes wet and you don't need to worry about the paint washing out of the brush because the water won't mix with the oil in the paint um, and when you come to use the brush again you just need to take the brush out wipe off all the excess water and you should then be able to use it in the same paint that you were using it in before um, You've obviously, another problem with that method though is that you need to keep on topping the water up because it will eventually evaporate and it can get quite dusty after a while, especially if it's been left for a long time. Um, so if, you, if you're not going to be using a chemical brush store, um, I would always recommend just, you know, using one of the, using the, the, the water method, just putting the, the brush inside a tin of water. Um, apart from those two methods, the only other option you're left with is just to try and wash the brush out as best you can. And I'm going to just show you that in the in the last part of the video. So, first of all, what I've got here, um, this is uh, some white spirit that has been used. Um, there's already still a little bit of paint in there. Um, I, I keep leftover white spirit around because I, I wash these oil-based brushes out in two different stages to make sure that they get a really thorough clean. So, first of all, I'm just going to wipe off as much of the oil-based paint as I possibly can back into the tin that I've been using. Obviously there's going to still be a little bit of paint left in there. Okay, so all that we're going to be doing is similar to the technique that we are using before, we're just going to start tapping the brush out into the solution using the same technique as we were using for the water based brushes just tapping it out on the base of the tin okay so that's that's pretty clean i'm going to wipe off all the excess back into the tin and then what i'm going to do i'm just going to spin it out again just like we're doing with the water based brush you really want to give this a good spin because you can't tap this out on the side of your hand like you could do with the water base one, otherwise you're going to get white spirit all over your hands, which really isn't good for your skin. <sighs> okay, so I mean, that brush is pretty clean, but there's still going to be a little bit of dirty white spirit in the bristles, especially in the stock closest to where the bristles are all held together so I'm gonna pour this this white spirit away and then I'm gonna take some clean white spirit about the same amount that was in there there was just about an inch and a half maybe two inches worth of white spirit in the bottom of that tin just then and then I'm going to give it another clean in completely clear white spirit. You can use turpentine or you can use any type of oil based brush cleaner, that'll be fine as well. The other, the other tricky thing about washing out these oil based brushes is whereas before where you could just see clean running water running through your hands telling you that the brush is clean, you obviously can't do that with with this as, as well because the white spirit tends to cloud up fairly quickly so you've just got to go with your gut instinct really. I've, I've probably rinsed it out for about a minute or so, that's usually more than enough time. And again I'm just going to wipe off all the excess and then give it a really really thorough spin. Okay so 
the uh, the brush is pretty clean now. Um, what I would then do after you've washed it out in the the clean white spirit is, I would then use this brush and give it a good rinse using the water-based technique. So I would use some warm soapy water, just exactly the same as you would be washing out a water-based brush, just as before earlier on in the video. Um, you don't have to be as thorough, you only really need to do that for a couple of minutes um, and then again get some some liquid detergent in the brush scrub it in the, the bottom of the basin and then give it a really thorough rinse with some clear warm water um, give it a good spin out take a rag and dry off the, the stock and the ferrule and all the bristles and the handle give it all a good clean and then again you can just stand it up in a jar the same way you did with the water based brush and allow that to dry and hopefully that should be enough to, to keep the bristles all nice and clean and then the brush should dry just fine. Um, like I said I, I don't really tend to wash out my oil based brushes, they're, uh, they're always stored wet in that little container that I've got because I mean it saves a lot of time and it means that I'm not mixing my water based and oil based brushes in different mediums, in different types of paint which is never usually good for the bristles. So that's the end of the video, if you have any questions at all please feel free to leave a comment at the bottom of this video. Um, if you're watching this video directly on YouTube then if you just click the link either on the screen now or the link in the description that'll take you over to our website where you can leave a comment and join the discussion there.